uh, father was a bureaucrat here in Washington during the 1930s. And there was a folk singer in Arkansas who sang a satirical song of the 1880s. And it was so much fun that, by gosh, they thought they'd put out a little song sheet. Uh, the brother, younger brother of Jackson Pollock was in the, uh, the New Deal at that time, Charlie Pollock, and he did the cover for the little song sheet. The name of the song sheet, sheet, sheet was The Candidate's a Dodger. Well, years later, in 1948, I was trying to help Henry Wallace run for president, and I, Wallace found that... <laughs> Wallace found that I was Charlie Seeger's son. Oh, he says, I'll have to tell you a story. I tried to get the Resettlement Administration refunded by Congress. I went up to Capitol Hill, and in the office of a very important senator, I was confronted with an angry man. He said, Mr. Wallace, you want me to refund a uh, part of the government that puts out a song like this, and he slaps <laughs> the song sheet that my father had put out 15 years before. <laughs> 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 the candidate's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, the candidate's a dodger, yes, a well-known well dodger. dodger. Oh, the candidate's, candidate's a dodger, dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger, dodger too. too. He'll Be plead your case you and claim you for your a vote. Look out, boys, he's dodging for a note. Oh, we're all a dodging, a dodging, a dodging, a dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging out the way through the world. Oh, the merchant, he's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. Oh, the merchant, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger, too. He'll sell you the goods at twice the price. But when you go to pay him, you got to pay him twice. So oh, we're all a dodging, 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 dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging out the way through the world. Oh, the farmer, he's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. Oh, the farmer, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger, too. He'll plow his cotton, plow his corn, and he'll make a living just as sure as you're born. Oh, we're all a dodging, a dodging, dodging, dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging out the way through the world. The woman who sang this song for the folk song collector her name was Emma Dusenberry in a little town in the hills of Arkansas. And she said when she was a girl, she set out to learn every song in the world. Then she found they were making up new songs quicker than she could learn them. Oh, the president's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. Oh, the president's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. He says it's okay. Out in Iraq, but he's sending more troops and he won't bring them back. Oh, we're all a dodging, a dodging, a dodging, a dodging. We're all a dodging on the way through the world. How about the lover? How about the lover? How about the lover? Do the lover. The lover, he's a dodger, yes, a well known dodger. The lover, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. Kiss you, hug you, call you his bride. Look out, girls, he's telling you a lie. Oh, we're all a dodging, a dodging, a dodging, a dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging on the way through the world. One of the keys of G. <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I say that uh, I counted my sons to tune for me. Good. Key of G? Anybody know if old Joe Clark existed? I heard tell that uh, this was written by a guy who courted old Joe Clark's daughter and the father didn't like him, wouldn't let him around. So he made up the song, is it true? This is a tune we all love to play together.
I went down to old Joe's house, he was lying in bed. I put my finger down to old Joe's throat, pulled out a chicken head. Very well, old Joe Clark, very well, I say. Very well, old Joe Clark, ain't got long to stay. Joe Clark had a house 16 stories high. Every story in that house was full of chicken pie. Very well, well, old Joe Clark, Clark very well, I say. Very well, well, old, old Joe Clark. Clark. In the months following September 11th, I found myself playing a little banjo run, which I'd had for three years and didn't know what to do with it, and all of a sudden I found words for it. And I had a nice chorus. But then it took me eight months to find some verses which were not too teachy-preachy. Uh, you see, when I was young, I thought myself an atheist, but I got my head got turned around by a Baptist preacher. It really got turned around. He was the man who said, uh, the ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral. With violence, you can murder the hater, but you don't murder hate, you just increase hate. He says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love and I'd say respect can do it. So that's how come this song got written. And I had people sing in the chorus with me before I had some decent verses. Down in Alabama, 1955. Not everybody here tonight was then alive. A young Baptist preacher led a bus boycott. He showed a way for a brand new day without firing a shot. Don't say it can't be done. The battle's just begun. Take it from Dr. King. You too can learn to sing, so drop the gun. Oh, those must have been an exciting 13 years. Young heroes, young heroines. There was laughter, there were tears. Students sitting down at lunch counters, children dancing in the street. To think it all started with Rosa refusing to give up her seat. Don't say it can't be done. The battle's just begun. 
Take it from Dr. King, you too can learn to sing. So drop the gun. Let's teach it to the people that don't know it yet. Don't say it can't be done. Sing that. Don't say it can't. The battle's just begun. The battle's just begun. Take it from Dr. King. Take it from Dr. Hey, let's try those three lines. Don't say it can't be done. The battle, the battle's just begun. Take it, take it from Dr. King. You too can learn to sing. You too can learn to sing. So drop the gun. So drop the gun. Now you know the whole chorus. Don't say it can't be done. The battle's just begun. Take it from Dr. King. You too can learn to sing. So drop the gun. Song, song, songs kept them going and growing. They didn't know all the millions of seeds that they were sowing. <laughs> they were singing on marches, even singing in jail. Songs gave them courage to believe they would not fail. Don't say it can't be done. The battle just begun. Take it from Dr. King. You too can learn to sing. So drop the gun. We need a trumpet. Sing it. Don't say it can't be done. The path has just been done. Take it from Dr. King. You too can learn to sing. So drop the gun. You're singing better and better and better. Put them together. <laughs> Don't say we can't be done. The battle just begun. Take it from Dr. King. You too can learn to sing. So Dr. King. We sang about Alabama 1955. But since September 11th, many wonder, will this world survive? But if the world learns the lessons from Dr. King, we can't survive, we can't survive. And so we sing. Don't say it can't be done. The battle just begun. Take it from Dr. King, you too can learn to sing. So Dr. King. I'm really sorry that our father couldn't be here. He was a minor bureaucrat, as I told you, here in Washington. At first with the Resettlement Administration and then the Farm Security Administration. And uh, then finally he was working with, as music director for the Pan American Union until the FBI caught up with him one day, and the next day he walked in and resigned. Oh, I have to tell you this, Troy. He was over-enthusiastic all his life about first one thing, then another. As a teenager, a little more than 100 years ago, he thought great symphonic music would save the world. He could look at a piece of paper two feet high with thousand notes on it, and turning the page along with, he knew he could read that page of notes and know what the symphony was supposed to sound like. Uh-oh, the piccolo player didn't miss his high note. And uh, then afterwards, he was studying in Europe, led some symphony orchestras, found he was going to go deaf. So he said, OK, I will not be a director of a symphony. He went into academia. Actually, he, the president of the University of California at Berkeley was in Europe and met him. And my father gave all sorts of confident things that he would do if he were in charge of a music department. Next thing you know, at age 24, he was the youngest full professor in charge of the setting up a music department at Berkeley. His fellow professors uh, got to him, though. They said, 
Seeger, you may know music, but you're an ignoramus when it comes to history and economics and a lot of other things. He started monitoring classes, including one in anthropology. Alfred Kruber, the fellow who discovered Ishii, uh, was there. I don't know if any of you read that wonderful book about Ishii, the California Indian. Once a week, he'd get on the stage and show how to make a fire with nothing more than a little bow stick and tell how you were able to catch animals with nothing but bows and arrows. It's a wonderful book. Well, then World War I came along. He made speeches against imperialist war. And my mother said, can't you keep your mouth shut? You're not going to get uh, drafted with your bad hearing and your bad eyesight and two children. He said, but something's wrong. You should speak up. Good old New England. His people are old New England, old New England. So although Seeger is a German name and he came over during the American Revolution. Uh, well, he got fired and my father got fired. I was conceived in California but born in the East. And in uh, our, my grandparents, his parents' home, there was a big barn. And in the barn, over a year and a half, he built America's, one of America's first automobile trailers. It had, I admit, it looked a little like a covered wagon, but it was made with uh, tongue and groove maple boards with brass screws, four wheels with solid rubber tires, and a, a drawbar about six feet long, not to be pulled by horses, but by a Model T Ford. This is 1921. And there was a eight, six foot square platform he could pull out and hold up the corners with two jacks till it was level. And my mother, who was a very good violinist, uh, would play Bach and Beethoven and Brahms and he would accompany her with a little folding organ. Well, they set off. For the trip was a complete disaster. Uh, nobody came to listen to them. Uh, they put up posters around some little country town Nobody even knew who Beethoven was. And they almost were drowned in the flood and woke up one morning with six serious farmers, this was in North Carolina, with guns. We don't want no gypsies round here. And my father says, we're not gypsies, in his New England voice. You're what? We're musicians. Well. He says, we need a place to camp out for the winter. We can't get back to New York with so the roads being so bad. They camped out in the woods in back of a, the Mackenzie's farmhouse. And one night they took their Beethoven and Brahms up to the farmhouse to show the Mackenzie's what kind of music they played. And the Mackenzie's said, oh, that's very nice. We play a little music too. And they took down banjos and fiddles and played up a storm, and my father said, for the first time in my life I realized the people had a lot of good music, and they didn't need my good music as much as I thought. <laughs> he kept, my mother had put her foot down, and says, this trip is not gonna work. She had to wash my diapers in an iron pot over an open fire. And uh, my brothers, my older brothers said it wasn't much fun for them either. He, he uh, taught at the Institute of Musical Art, later on called Juilliard, uh, during the 20s, kept his mouth shut. Along comes the uh, crash of 1929, and it seemed to him, and I guess some millions of others, that this was the end of the free enterprise system. And he started working with communists. Next thing, though, uh, they were, he, he and Aaron Copeland and several others had what they call the Composers Collective. After all, in Russia, they had Farmers Collective. Why not a Composers Collective? But the songs they composed, the proletariat didn't seem to be very interested in. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like Schoenberg and Stravinsky. <laughs> and the May Day song needed a very a trained tenor and a very good pianist <laughs> to play it. <laughs> 1937, my father read the transcript of the Moscow Purge trials and said, oh, 
This is Stalin just murdering his competitors. This is no way to run a revolution. And he got out in his words. However, just about 1940, Woody Guthrie came to town and Alan Lomax here at the Library of Congress got him to record all his songs that he had at the time and his life history. And uh, Woody must have thought I was a queer duck. He was seven years older than I was. Uh, he said, that Seeger's the youngest man I ever knew. He don't drink, he don't smoke, he don't chase girls. But I had a good ear and I could accompany Woody in every single song he did. So I tagged along with him for a while. My father concentrated on musicology for the last few years of his life until his 80s. And then for the first time in his life, I found him deeply pessimistic. He says, Pete, I can't persuade the scientists I talk to that they have the most dangerous religion in the world. The scientist says, Charlie, I don't have a religion. I base my actions on observation, double-checked worldwide as all science should be and then draw logical conclusions. Oh no, says my father, haven't you observed that there are insane, power-hungry people in the world, people like Hitler? Is it logical to put in their hands the ability to destroy the world? But you're, you're attacking all science. If I didn't discover these things, somebody else would. Yes, I suppose if you didn't rape this woman, somebody else would, so why not? The scientist staggers away, saying you've no right to ask questions like this. My father shouts after them, face it, it's a religious belief. You think that an infinite increase in empirical information is a good thing. Can you prove it? <laughs> of course you can't. Of course, then he turned to me with a wry smile and says, of course, Peter, if I'm right, perhaps the committee that told Galileo to shut up was correct. <laughs> if you were alive, this was 30 years ago, I'd argue with him. You remember Hegel? The philosopher Hegel says there's always thesis. There's always antithesis. And there is synthesis. And I think the synthesis is in the song Turn, Turn. Uh, yes, at one time all our ancestors were good killers. The ones who were not good killers didn't have descendants. It's probably in our genes to like to go whack. That's why we, people like golf and baseball and so on. <laughs> I, li I like to chop trees. <laughs> However, I'm more optimistic today than I was right after Hiroshima. I thought surely within a few decades somebody was gonna drop that bomb and then others would be dropped and if we weren't killed, we'd be poisoned by the fallout. But. Eisenhower's people wouldn't let General Curtis LeMay uh, stop, continue what he was doing. He was playing chicken with the Russians, trying to fool them into sending one plane west. And he'd have his cameras picked on the border. And if they sent one plane west, he'd send a hundred plane east and wipe out the country. When at the Bay of Pigs, he had a hundred planes in the air. And uh, the, uh, he sent a message to all the pilots. Uh, communication with Washington may be cut off. If it is, take your orders directly from me. When Kennedy's people found he'd done that, they said, don't do that again. When he died in 1990, he was still grumbling, we would have been better off if we'd had World War III in 1954. You know the French definition of an expert? Somebody who avoids all the little mistakes on the way to the big fallacy. Well, I'm talking too much. It's supposed to be a musical evening, but let's sing a song. <laughs> this is an old pop song. But you all know it. If you don't know the words, I'll give them to you. In church, they call this lining out the hymn.
You know it. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere. Way up high. There's a land I heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow. Skies are blue. And the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops way up above the chimney tops. Where trouble melt like lemon drops way up above the chimney tops. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere. Bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why they know why can't I? Birds fly. Now there's two more lines, but I found I had to change a couple words. I knew the man who wrote these words. He's somewhere up there. He says, Pete, you can fool around with your old folk songs, but don't you touch over the rainbow. Please. Yep, wherever you are. His name was Yip Harburg. Yep, wherever you are, I gotta change two words, because if I'd been there when little Dorothy says, why can't I, I'd tell her. You know why you can't, Dorothy? Because you only ask for yourself. You gotta ask for everybody, because either we're all gonna make it over that rainbow, or nobody's gonna make it. So sing, if plucky little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why can't you and I? Yeah, plucky little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow why can you get some harmony My niece, Sonia, is somewhere off, off stage. Will you come, Sonia? Because you can sing this song. I made it up, and uh, I made it when my wife and I were touring in Japan about 40 years ago. Here's Sonia Kramer, who lives in Washington. See if that mic is working. No, can you turn on Can this one be Sonia's turned on? Mic? There we go. Thank you. Can you imagine learning the English language, this crazy English language, all of a sudden? And a little magazine was published by a young professor in Osaka. And I'm a magazine-aholic. I buy it. And there I read a poem called, When I Was Most Beautiful. Later on, when I was touring Japan, I was able to meet the woman who wrote the poem, Noriko Ibaraki, and she came up on the stage, recited the original in Japanese, and then her own translation of the song, which I put a melody to. When I was most beautiful, city 
tears were falling and from unexpected places blue sky was seen when I was most beautiful people around me were killed and for paint and powder I lost the chance Nobody gave me kind gifts, men knew only to salute and went away when I was most beautiful. My country lost the war, I paraded the main streets with my blouse sleeves rolled high. Jazz overflowed the radio. I broke the prohibition against smoking. Sweet music of another land. When I was most beautiful, I was most unhappy. I was quite absurd. I was quite alone. decided to live long like Monsieur Rouault who was a very old man when he painted such terribly beautiful pictures you see If the sh <laughs> My 93-year-old brother is here tonight, and his daughter, Kate, has a trio uh, called the Short Sisters. And if the Short Sisters are out there, would they please come out here and sing a couple songs? Where are they? start doing uh, Quite Early Morning with Pete. It's a song he wrote. It's got a great chorus. You guys are all warmed up. You can sing with us. Take just a moment. Um, we're always going to make sure we're in tune. And I just want to say um, it's really wonderful being here um, with my family tonight. <laughs> Speaking of my family, Dean. Oh yes. We need you on this song. <laughs> Little harmonica out there. And Pete's gonna kick us off so we get the rhythm right.
In a popular magazine, Red Book, I read a little poem, and it had an extraordinary last line in it. So I found myself writing a new song with that same last line. The song is called The Calendar. May, may the flowers bloom a June wedding, an empty room. July was very warm. Oh, lie low, lie low, lie low. August, we beat the heat, fled the suburbs for the beach. September back to school. Lie low, lie low, lie low. October red and gold. November turning cold. December round the tree. Lie low. January brought the snow, February skiing all did go. March, my God, how did the wind blow? Lie low, lie low, lie low. April, cruel, sweet April. Send to us the bill for the burning of the 
children for the burning of the children lie low lie low lie Now, as a representative of the, of the next generation, uh, the Short Sisters are going to do some songs, <laughs> and they've got great parts for you, for you. We learned them from Library of Congress recordings. We thought that was very appropriate. <laughs> and the first part, first one has a whistling part. So You'll practice. Learn it, but you want to practice a little? Just <laughs> That's good. You'll, you'll hear it when goes. it comes. Okay. You'll follow Kate and me. We're the whistlers in the group. Kim plays guitar, but does not whistle. Can't whistle. Um, this is called Dear Oki. It's by Joy O'Dell. And we got it off an album called Songs of Migration and Immigration, most of which is in Polish. But this one was not. Dear Oki, if you see Arky, tell him Texas got a job for him out in California. Picking up prunes, squeezing oil out of olives. Dear Oki, if you see Arky, tell him Texas got a job for him out in California. Digging oil wells, all he needs is a shovel. Now he'll be lucky if he finds a place to live. But there's orange juice fountains flowing for those kids of his. Dear Oki, if you see Arky, tell him Texas got a job for him out in California. Working in a bank, all he needs is some money. Dear Oki, if you see Arky, tell him Texas got a job for him out in California. Selling used cars, just waiting for the sucker. Okay, now this is your part. Texas got a job for him out in California. Raking up gold, playing fiddle in the follies. Now he'll be lucky if he finds a place to live. But there's orange juice fountains flowing for those kids of his. Dear Oki, if you see Arky, tell him Texas got a job for him out in California. Picking up prunes, squeezing oil out of all this. We're going to do one more as the Short Sisters, and then I think there's a huge mob coming out on the stage. This next one we also learned from a Folkways recording, and this was one I, uh, you know, this music just grabs you. This was an album that was called Songs from the Georgia Sea Islands, and I think I listened to it about 25 times before I, uh, you know, finally listened to something else for a while. This one's called Carrie Bell. The only sad thing about it is there's only three verses, but the singer had a very clever thing that he did that I'm surprised more people don't do. He sings his way out. He sings verse one, two, three, and then two, and then one. So it gets five verses you'll hear. It's got a real nice slow chorus, so let's and hear some singing lots out there. lots of room for harmony. Lots of harmony. Carrie Bell, don't weep. Carrie Bell, don't moan. Don't you hang your head and cry. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, 
ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, I'm gonna carry to the Alamo ever since I lay in a barroom door. I said I'll never get drunk anymore. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, I'm gonna carry to the Alamo. Well, I pawned my watch and I pawned my chain and I pawned my diamond ring. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh, no. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, I'm gonna carry to the Alamo. Ever since I lay in a barroom door, I said I'll never. Get drunk anymore. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh no, I'm gonna carry to the Alamo. Carry back. Don't we carry bells on moan? Don't you hang your head and cry? Last time. Ain't, Ain't gonna, gonna hurt nobody. nobody. Oh, no. Ain't, Ain't gonna hurt nobody. nobody. Oh, no. I'm gonna carry to the Alamo. Let's do our bow. Are we gonna bow? I don't think we're gonna bow. No, what do we have to do? <laughs> we're gonna ask my younger brother and sister to come out. And I think Dean should bring his harmonica out. Dean is Kate's husband. I think we have Brother John also. Coming and Brother John, why don't you come here? Brother John, somewhere up there. And could he come down? Oh, good, good. Hey. Yes. Peggy and Michael's mother and my stepmother, Ruth Crawford Seeger, uh, exactly 60 years ago was putting together a songbook called American Folk Songs for Christmas. And I don't know if the book is still available now, but it had in it a great song, which I've been teaching up in the little town I live in, upstate New York. And we get everybody singing on it because just one line changes and the song keeps going. Now it's called The Last Month of the Year. I know this is not Christmas time. You, need, you may want seven months to look it up and really learn it, because believe me, you can teach it to your friends come holiday season. In, the, in our little uh, Clearwater Club on the edge of the Hudson River, we have an annual holiday song fest, and we sing Hanukkah songs, like In My Window. Oh, we didn't sing that. It's a, a, one of the best Hanukkah songs. Just 
one word changes in every verse and you sing eight verses. <laughs> and uh, we'll sing a song in Arabic too. And we'll sing this song last month of the year. Oh, we've got to get the guitar. I guess I could <laughs> put in a plug for the record that Peggy and I and Penny and some of our kids made of all, nearly all the songs in our mother's American songs for Christmas. The book is out of print. Uh, you can probably find it on eBay, but you can find uh, the record at your nearest rounder dealer, which is in uh, Cambridge, Mar uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> what month was my Jesus born in? Here's what you have to learn to sing. On the last month of the year, what month was my Jesus born in? On the last month of the year. Whoa, January, January, February, March, oh Lord, April, May, June. We got July, August, September, October, all the month. November on the 25th day of December, on the last month of the year. Well, the shepherds gathered round him on the last month of the year. Shepherds gathered round him on the last month of the year. Oh, January, January, February, 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 The three kings came to praise him. Sing it. On the last month of the year, shepherds came to praise him. On the last month of the year. Oh, January. February, February, March, oh Lord, April, May, and June. We got July, August, September, October, and November on the 25th day of December on the last month Herod sent his soldiers on the last month of the year. Herod sent his soldiers on the last month of the year. Oh, January, February, March, oh Lord, April, May, and June. July, August, September, October, and they go. November on the 25th day of December on the last month of the year. They had to flee to Egypt on the Had to flee to Egypt on the last month of the year. Oh, January, February, February, March, oh Lord, April, May, and June. Check out July, August, September, October, and November on the 25th day of the December on the last month of the year. But now we're all here singing. I hope you are singing. <laughs> on the last month of the year. 
now we're all here singing. On the land, my God, January, January, February, February, March, March, Lordy, April, May, and June. You got July, August, September, October, and November on the 25th day of December. Brothers, brothers, sisters, sisters, all, all. Every rung goes higher, higher. Where's that harmony? Sisters, sisters, some women in Milwaukee wrote a nice verse. We are dancing Sarah's circle. We are dancing Sarah's circle. Sing it. Sisters, sisters, brothers, brothers, all. Every round, a generation.
hey, hey, skip to my loo, hey, hey, skip to my loo, hey, hey, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, bye. -bye. Get some harmony. in the sugar bowl, shoo, shoo, shoo. Flies in the sugar bowl, shoo, shoo, shoo. Flies in the sugar bowl, shoo, shoo, shoo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. What'll I do? My banjo's out of tune. What'll I do? My banjo's out of tune. What will I do? Skip to my loo, my darling. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Skip to my loo, my darling. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. That is Dio and that is Gable. Skip to my loo, my darling. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Loo, loo, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. How do we get out of this skip to Maloo? How do we get out of this skip to Maloo? How do we get out of this skip to Maloo? Skip to Maloo, my darling. Time to go home now, thanks to you. Time to go home now, thanks to you. Time to go home now, thanks to you all. Skip to Maloo, my darling. Skip to Maloo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> I think we know when you've had enough. <laughs> Just remember that the world is divided into people who think they are right. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.